Hi everybody, it's Paul Tilly. Welcome back to HN2150. In this unit, Unit 7, Training and Technology. By the very fact that you're doing this course, you're fairly familiar with the concept of using technology in education. This video that you're watching is using technology, in this case internet technology, and allow me, it allows me to convey information in a format that you can watch when it's convenient to you. Specifically, I want to discuss with you some of the key learning objectives of this unit. First, we're going to explain what e-learning is and what exactly is involved in learning using technology. We're going to compare and contrast computer-based training, interactive media-based training, and virtual reality. We're going to describe the advantages and limitations of e-learning. We're going to describe current e-learning platforms. And we're going to describe self-paced instruction. Further, we're going to describe the contribution various forms of e-learning makes to individual development. And finally, we're going to discuss the use of e-learning platforms for delivery and achieving organizational and development goals. So you're a firm, and you're located offices all across Canada, all across the world. How do you provide training to people who work in those remote offices? Well, think about it. You send out a trainer to every office. It would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and take a tremendous amount of time. So we need to find a more efficient and effective way to provide the training so that we get a consistent quality level of training where at the same time looking at a cost-effective way of doing it. Well, technology-based training has really become popular because it allows for that sort of thing. It provides consistency and it provides it at a reasonable price. So, technology-based training has some key benefits. First, TBD can help reduce training and learning time, reduce costs, provide instructional consistency, and provide privacy for learning so trainees can master the learning at their own pace. TBD is generally safe and relatively easy to access, particularly with high-speed internet technology. TBT is an area of training that has grown in leaps and bounds in the last little while, and we have to look at what are some of the things that people are using, and where is this going to go in the future, so we'll take a look at that in this unit. Technology-based training means that training includes a whole bunch of delivery mechanisms, including web-based delivery, computerized self-study using CDs or, or some other type of media, storage media, satellite or TV broadcasts, audio, video conferencing systems, web conferencing systems, and teleconferencing. One form of technology-based training is computer-based training, or CBT it's often known as. Computer-based training refers to computer training that will teach job-related skills. This type of training can include text, graphics, animation, can be delivered via CDs, DVD, internet, intranet, which is an internet, an internal internet to a company so that only people who work for the company can access it. Uh, E-learning is another form of uh, computer-based training that uses a company internet or intranet to deliver the training and instruction to trainees. I have a brief example of a computer-based training right here. What you're looking at is a site by Skillsoft. Now, Skillsoft is a big provider of uh, training to corporations around the world. They have a lot of computer-based training programs, and this one here that I'm showing you is one that's available online. Uh, it is uh, a series of slides with a voiceover and it is engaging in that it asks you specific questions as you go through and you type in your responses. It is a form of computer-based training and I should note that it is self-directed as well. You consider how long it takes to go through the module. It has This particular one has 19 slides to it. You can go back, you can go forward, you can skip, um, you can review it. So it's entirely at your pace, so the learner determines how long he or she spends at the particular topic. You often hear, too, about self-directed learning 
in terms of the online environment. Self-directed learning means that it's learning that you direct, the learner directs him or herself. Self-directed or self-paced, sometimes it's called self-paced learning, means a trainee will use self-study by but has access to someone who can answer questions for him or her. So a guide on the side, more or less. This is a process that sees the trainees taking responsibility and initiative to take the training on their own time. This can be computer-based or it could be a, a paper manual or a booklet and contains all of the training information in that manual or booklet. Trainees can access the information at any time to take the training. Self-directed learning can be more flexible than an instructor-led computer-based training. Trainees can build their own knowledge and decide what training level they need. Trainees can become more independent and they can gain the skills needed to make more efficient and more effective use of their time. Trainees can also learn according to their own learning style. Another issue that you often hear in, in this type of training is the concept of a synchronous environment versus an asynchronous learning environment. A synchronous learning environment is very similar to a classroom in the sense that the class meets from 1 to 2 on Tuesdays. So that means everybody comes and everybody sits in class and it's for that one hour and it's on Tuesday. So everybody learns in that mode. It's kind of a lockstep type thing. Asynchronous, on the other hand, allows flexibility so that you can take a look at the course at 1 o'clock in the day. I might like to look at the course at 1 o'clock in the morning. We're all at different times. We can look at it when we want. The D2L program that we use in order to teach this course is very similar to that. You can decide when you want to access the course. Somebody else can decide at a different time. So we don't have a set class per se, but we do have the material there for you to access at any point in time that you want it. So computer-based training really can be either of these two. It can be synchronous, meaning that the group all go together, or asynchronous. And some training incorporates both methods into the training methodology. So synchronous training tends to be real-time, tends to be live. It would have to have this ability to get good feedback on a quick basis. And that's really the biggest advantage of it, is that everybody is in it together so that everybody learns together. So the trainees have to be there on their computers at a specific time so that they can chat and that they can deal with one another. And I don't know if, if you've used any other pieces of software in the DTUL program, but we do have one that allows for this chat feature to happen so the class can get together and chat about. Now that's great, it works really good, but it requires everybody to be there. The asynchronous means that the trainees can get access to the training material at any time, at any location, such as D2L. And the information is given in text, in instructions, in graphics, in animation, in video, in audio, that can be played at the learner's leisure. As I've alluded to so far, the up-and-coming learning style is one that blends or melds the two that I've just referred to. Synchronous learning has some key advantages. The group are all there together and they work together as a group to achieve certain learning objectives. That's positive. Asynchronous learning also has some key advantages that allows individual learners to kind of learn at their own pace at their own time, so it works great for them. If we blend the two so that we have certain elements that are synchronous in a course and certain elements that are asynchronous in a course, the theory is, is that we can get the benefits of both. Blended learning builds on the benefits of both and you'll see a lot more examples of blended learning in the coming years because it saves money, it saves time, and it allows for the benefits of both asynchronous and synchronous to be built upon. So, Blended learning, by definition, is a formal education program in which the student learns, at least in part, through delivery of content and instruction via digital or online media, with some element of student control over time, place, pace, and path. Over the last number of years, too, another popular mode that has come up is video conferencing. 
Now, the college and organizations like the college often have expensive video conferencing systems. Now, these systems allow someone in one location to conference with someone else in another location. And it's very similar like to a closed circuit television system that works over a long distance. So for example here in Clareville we can have a teleconference with the folks in Grand Falls. They can sit in a room in Grand Falls, we can sit in a room in Clareville and communicate back and forth with one another. In fact I've done several courses where I've, my students were here in Clareville and in Grand Falls as well or and in Cornerbrook as well. And that brings the class as one complete class. It works very well. It's synchronous, meaning that we met at 12 to 1 and 1 to 3, but it is not much different than the classroom environment. Physically we're not there together, but we are there together in terms of the class and, and the discussions in the class, so it has some major benefits there. From an organizational point of view, you think of some of the savings that come of that. Well, you know, it has a lot of benefits of bringing people together, but you physically don't have to move people, put them in hotels, fly them, worry about the time uh, it takes to fly from point A to point B or drive from point A to point B. So it cuts down a tremendous amount of cost and it provides many of the advantages of people getting together. So video conferencing, as a result, has become popular and it's very popular in terms of training as well. Video conferencing over the last number of years has migrated a lot to the online environment. Programs like Skype or FaceTime or even Facebook now offer abilities to use a video type system to move back and forth between a person in one location and a person in another location or to bring several people on into a multi-channel discussion. The video conferencing, web conferencing field is certainly evolving. In fact, technology has moved a lot in the last 15 years. The latest technology is a technology called virtual reality. And what virtual reality does is it makes your, makes your brain think that you're physically somewhere you're not. Using a usually a, a set of glasses with two little televisions built into it, People can work in a virtual reality environment. And I have an example here of Caterpillar. Caterpillar, for example, do a lot of their training using virtual reality now. So someone will put this outfit on, and I can show you here on the computer screen. Someone will, you think you're looking at a, a tractor, one of the Caterpillar tractors, and you can go in and you can change the oil or show where the oil filter is and see the track and see the, the drive system. You can see all those things in your view screen and be able to manipulate them. So the computer technology allows us to do that sort of thing now, especially with high-speed internet, it allows for it to flow very well. And Caterpillar uses it very effectively. Well, why would Caterpillar do it? When you think about where their equipment is, usually it's in a remote location, far away from a dealer, costs a lot of money to put dealers there. So if we could take virtual reality, we can take someone in a remote location, such as a Hibernia platform, for example, and allow them to experience the, the unit in a relatively safe environment. You have a video camera on your head or a camera type outfit on your head and, and you think you're really there. You can do all the work that needs to be done, see how it's done, see what's required, see, see the steps and without actually doing anything but you're doing it but you're physically not doing it. So next let's take a look at computer-based training and what we can do in order to design better computer-based training. Well, first of all, computer-based training uses computer-based techniques and requires a lot of planning. So you have to think about what you're going to do before you actually do it. So it forces a lot of planning. The technology really facilitates this stuff happening. But we've got to be careful that the technology doesn't overwhelm us in terms of we're teaching the subject, not the technology. The technology is a tool to deliver the teaching as opposed to the teaching itself. And training programs have to include active practice. And the computer technology sometimes is a little bit limited with regards to active practice there. Like, for example, this video, you don't have a lot of active practice with it. But using more advanced form of, of technology, we can certainly incorporate and build active practice into it. There are a number of training methods that are being incorporated into computer-based training. First, we'll take a look at games. Uh, games are good because they're engaging and they bring people into a more immersive experience. 
Um, games are relatively realistic and entertaining. They teach trainees the need, uh, what they need to know, such as things like puzzles or crossword puzzles can be used to practice learning. Games encourage trainees to practice and it helps them see patterns and relationships in training materials. Computer simulations help trainees learn tasks and simulated work environments can be presented. For example, simulations are often used to teach pilots how to fly airplanes. A large Canadian company, CAE, make big flight simulators. And here's an example of one right here. This flight simulator looks and feels inside. It looks and feels like an aircraft. When you get in it, the TV screens, which make the the windscreens of the of the, the plane, uh, show images that are almost realistic of any airport in the world. We can get in the machine, start it up, hear noise that there's a, there's a stereo system in it that sounds just like a real airplane. Not only that, when we move down the runway, we can feel the machine move because the box that this trainer is in is in is on pistons, and these pistons move and give the illusion of movement. So what we have is a very high fidelity experience that feels and acts exactly like an airplane. And because of that, the pilots can do things in a relatively safe environment and learn the steps involved in making sure that any situation is addressed. So we can set up for a rainy environment, a snowy environment, a something not working properly environment, wherever thing is falling apart, buzzers are going off, these sorts of things, without any real risk. But it certainly allows us to teach very good skills to pilots. Computers and technology are also very useful for telling stories. Years ago, we used to watch films and videos. Now, with computer technology, we can watch those same videos, but they can be tailored for our learning environment. But we might, uh, for example, the computer could stop and at a certain point and say, what would you do now? And depending on what you select to do, one type of scenario will play or another type of scenario will play. So the story can, can really be defined by how you make it and the training that comes of it. So this allows for the next major issue, which is really dealing with the customizability. A lot of the training on computers, because of this, um, the, the way that the programs are set up and because of the advances in computer technology and uh, using smart technology, allows for a relative customization of the training and the training environment so that people who actually are in the process of learning can learn based on a bunch of things that the computer has built into it in terms of possible scenarios, possible answers, possible questions. And this can change based on the person's uh, what the person feeds back into the computer. So having reviewed a lot of this stuff, now let's look at some of the major advantages and disadvantages that been, uh, have been identified to the train E in terms of using computer-based training. First and foremost, it provides greater flexibility. So the training can take place anywhere, anytime, and that's valuable. The employees don't have to leave work in order to do the training. In fact, they could do the training literally anywhere if they have a computer access. It allows greater control over learning, which can include self-paced learning. You are the one, the learner, is the one that determines the pace of the learning. It helps shy students interact with others. It allows trainees to pace their learning. And probably another key feature is it provides just-in-time learning, so we can tailor the learning to the, the needs that, as they arise. From a disadvantage point of view, the trainee has less, less interpersonal contact with people. You're very much dealing with a machine. Some people, it's just not going to work for. Their learning style does not match with computer-based training. Also, computer-based training requires that you have some level of comfort with computers. If you're dealing with people who don't have comfort with computers, that type of training is probably not going to work well for them. Now let's take a look at it from the point of view of the trainer's point of view. So what 
the training organization, what advantages, what disadvantages would computer-based training bring to it? Well, from an advantage point of view, it ensures all trainees receive the same training. There's consistency. It allows large numbers of employees to be trained in a short period of time. It doesn't matter where they are either. They can be anywhere. Internet delivered, internet access is everywhere. Tracking employees' progress can help the certification. One of the things with the learning management system, which is a, a system such as D2L that is used to manage the people's access to things, it tracks what you've seen and what you haven't seen. So it can keep track of where you are in terms of the overall training process. Reduces costs associated with training, including travel costs, meal costs, accommodation costs. Certainly big benefits there from an, an employer's trainer's point of view. The downside, well, some employees may just be uncomfortable with this type of system. Um, and probably the biggest thing that scares off a lot of employers is development costs. Development costs on this type of training, particularly seeing it's always evolving and last year's technology doesn't match this year's technology, is cost. Cost of development is very, very high. And what we need to be able to do is to ensure that we can make it manageable in terms of the cost of development. We need to look at a cost benefit to say is, is computer-based instruction beneficial and can it be done at a reasonable cost? You may ask too, where is the future of this? Well, the future of this technology is unlimited. We're seeing tremendous growth in the last number of years. Just some of the things I want you to look out for now is, uh, well, Mobile learning is probably the biggest advantage and the biggest thing that's coming into our future. You'll see a lot of people doing learning on their iPhone or on their iPad. We need to be able to move and learn at the same time. A lot of these learning systems are now being set up for a very mobile environment. That's going to be critical in the next few years. We're seeing the commonality, the more commonality of podcasts be the audio video such as this here. You're going to see a lot more instructors using this type of method in the next little while. And we're going to see it getting easier and easier and less time consuming to do. So that's going to be important. We're going to see the increased use of social media. And what I mean by social media is blogs, which are web blogs. Um, um, Facebook, Twitter, um, Reddit, all of these types of tools are going to become more common in the use and delivery of online training and uh, you're going to see the companies such as Google, such as Facebook, going into that online world, online training world, heavily in the next few years because it is a very high demand market and there's a lot of money to be made in it and we're still looking for a better system. There's always a look out for a better system. These companies certainly are the ones with the, the money and the might and the technology to make that better system. So overall, that's that unit. I want you to take a hard look at the types of tools that are used and the advantages and disadvantages of those tools. So, having done that, that's Unit 7. If you have any questions, you let me know. Thank you.